Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. Not quite to Summoner's Rift, but we're coming into game number two. Let's go ahead and hit up the picks and bands. Swapping it back over and of course we do need to change this uh, one to be right side up. As Northwestern University have claimed themselves precisely and exactly one victory tonight in game number one versus Southern Illinois University. And of course, give me a brief, brief moment as uh, do look to fix up the uh, the overlays. So bear with me as I uh, continue to look to update these. But uh, yeah, so it's Northwestern University one win in game number one. Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville, they um, they definitely had some issues. And I think one of their big issues stemmed from jungle pressure. It was just so massively in favor of Northwestern on Troncat lulls that I'm not surprised to see that Elise Band come out along with not only a Poppy to stop that top lane matchup from being so oppressive, but they're still gonna ban that Shen, but that does leave things like uh, like Malphite up. We can still put up a big tank performance there. Uh, you can still run things like uh, Gragas in the jungle or in top lane. He he does work there. We started to see him maybe emerge into the top lane uh, as a, a popular pick uh, to be uh, taken there. Let me uh, just do, 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 check this one out. I think this is what we need. So give me a brief moment to go ahead and fix up. All of this. Yeah, there we go. There's got the E up there. Uh, so, yeah, as far as Malphite's concerned, that's exactly what I was expecting. It's locked in there for Northwestern. All they look to learn to run is Super Tank's top lane. Uh, I believe they actually ran Maokai earlier this season, uh, but I might be thinking of another team. There's been a lot of games uh, this season, so pardon me. But yeah, Super Tank's top lane. And uh, the Gragas pick here for uh, Haha PK Leader, I'm not sure about that one. You gotta do, we gotta have d either different paths, different gank paths, different, you know, capitalization or you know, follow up from the lanes. Something's gotta go differently, so that's the lane. Or I guess it's not really a lane, but that's what I wanna watch. Uh, this game uh, because at least for Northwestern they did seem like they had a much better early game plan centered around jungle pressure and then lanes capitalizing on that worked out in incredibly well so keep an eye on that but uh, another thing to keep an eye on would be uh, the carry lineup uh, the solo damage from Lucian and maybe follow-up damage from uh, or initial damage from Oriana last game was okay for uh, Southern Illinois but I really got set behind early. 0 2 in lane for, for uh, the mid lane. Waffle Meister is going to need some extra crispy batter. Putting it in the presses for the game number two. And yeah, it's still going for back for that trundle pick. Um, I'm just not sold on it for Taburu. Um, and maybe even, it's not even the champion, but maybe the build uh, slightly different. Could be seeing uh, some. Uh, some additional changes there. Uh, an Udyr lock-in for Troncat Lulz. Uh, I didn't even list Udyr in the realm of possible champions. Uh, don't see it too much in competitive play. I think it got played uh, th four times in NALCS this season. Um, I think it was maybe only three. But yeah, out of all the games played, that is not very many. Uh, it's somewhat of a niche pick, but it's still pretty strong and annoying. And I'm actually really looking forward to seeing what Troncat Lulz can do with that, considering that Udyr, um, you know, much different playstyle from uh, Elise. So that Elise Poppy ban really paying off this game. We'll see how much it does pay off uh, as we get through into the next few champion choices. Are we just going to, you know, go for the salty run back? Is this going to be the Oriana lock-in with like a Lucian carry? <laughs> that would actually be pretty cool to see. Uh, I mean, Southern Illinois, if you practice a team comp and you are confident that you can make it work, then maybe go back for it again. And yeah, there's the Oriana lock-in. What's coming up next? It is the Lucian. And they're just going to go ahead. I, I, I would say that the phrase is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I, I would say that, you know, after game one, there's definitely a few things that need fixing. So... Maybe some stuff to keep an eye on. And I actually like the double ban on Waffle Meister to keep him off his alternative comfort picks. So he's kind of forced onto this sort of safe farm based mid lane in Oriana that has a, a little bit more of a supportive role uh, than most uh, most mid laners who are you know looking to carry things out here. So now all that's left is the support pick here. And I'm, um, you know, it's not going to be a Braum. 
or I mean, it could be a problem if they just want to run actually the exact same team comp, but they're going to switch it up, and the change that uh, Southern Illinois University Edwardsville are going to run this game is going to be a Nautilus support. That's actually kind of interesting, because theoretically, like, the idea is, you know, what do you change? So for Braum, it was just either a big counter-engage or just, like, super tanky support uh, with a lot of CC. Well, it doesn't, uh, I think Nautilus has the most forms of crowd control of any champion in the game with five. So every single one of his moves has a crowd control component and uh, his passive has a crowd control component on his auto attack. So it's basically like, you know, Udyr, an entire ability of his is bear stance. Uh, Nautilus just has that as a passive. Of course, it doesn't give you the move speed or anything else, but you get the idea. Uh, so Nautilus is really cool, and it's going to be used to lock down this mid lane Cassidin. It's going to be a lot easier to track that guy down when he's got that depth charge chasing him. And speaking of depth charges, um, you know, that's not... Uh, not something that uh, Ezreal can really run away from either. So it's good at catching mobile champions, and that's exactly what Northwestern has. Uh, so super excited to see how well that works out, but super excited to actually get into game number two in our best of threes. So make sure you guys stick around and uh, you know come back when, uh, when we are done with our short commercial break. It will be very short, but not before. I give a quick shout out to our sponsors, Twitch, Brain Gear, and Asus Republic of Gamers. Asus, of course, setting us to DreamHack for the CSL Grand Finals, so super big fan there. Thanks for watching on Twitch. If you want to get your brain in gear with brain gear, check them out and thank them for sponsoring the CSL this season. Also, of course, social media links. If you have any comments or predictions for tonight's games, head on over to Twitter or Facebook, at CStarLeague and slash Collegiate Star League on Facebook. Let us know who you guys think is going to win. Or just type it in chat. Let us know. Northwestern or Southern Illinois University Edwardsville. We'll be coming back with game number two here in just a second. So stick around. We'll be right back with more CSL action.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, have no fear, we will get everything swapped over here in just a second. And welcome back to game number two of the CSL's uh, spring playoffs. This is the second half of the round of 32. My name is Reed Rapid Melton, and I do want to welcome you to Summoner's Rift tonight for game two of Northwestern University on the blue side, on the left hand side of your screen. They are, of course, taking on a friendly friends from Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville. So it's Wildcats from Northwestern versus the Cougars from Southern Illinois. And a quick trip through the enemy jungle to check things out, uh, but not really, uh, not really all that much. We're going to see another quick trip through here from Tron Cat Lulz. He's running through his own jungle looking for a Gromp start. But of course, uh, like we said, that trip through the enemy jungle did mean that they now scout the lane situation. So they know Taburu X is on the top half of the map. And I think that's exactly what they want. They want the 1v1 matchup Coral Malphite. Why this wasn't the OCE skin, I don't know. It seems like he's got a lot going on with the Great Barrier Reef. But uh, once again, we got the mid lane action. Cosmic Kassadin, man. This, this sword on his arm is almost the coolest thing I've ever seen in League of Legends. Like, it's actually just the sickest. Uh, and we had a super sick performance from Uncle Sam, who, yes, did get his lane camped pretty hard. So, um, by his jungler to help him out early on. Made a big difference and allowed Uncle Sam to carry. Had Troncat Lulz looking super strong. So, definitely a good combination. It was strong in game one. We'll see how it works out in game number two. So for Northwestern, uh, they have a decent start, decent lanes, and everything's pretty much the same. I'd, th I'd say the big difference comes from the duo lanes because we have a new AD carry. And of course, we've got Desaltifier on Thresh. Now, I guess technically that should be like Desalinifier since that's what the process of desalting water is called. But we'll see if, uh, see if he's able to cause some salt down there in the bottom lane. I uh, do have a new new support here in Nautilus, the dredge line, uh, with literal dredge lines. So super excited to see the effectiveness of uh, you know naming yourself after a spell that you are using. Here comes in Troncat Lulz. Uh, gets slowed out just ever so slightly uh, there by the command distortion. Able to keep Waffelmeister safe. And yeah, Nerves of Steel not actually going for the, uh, the flash, which was blown about this time off the first kank. Coming in uh, from Troncat Lulz in game number one. So at least for right now, the uh, lanes seem pretty stable. There's no you know massive issues in any of them, and I would say the uh, the biggest thing to watch out for. Uh, let's go down the uh, go down the road for Taburu would be to maybe uh, check out the the item build the way that that works out because uh, game number one he just uh, it, he built damage items like a Sheen first teleported in the lane and died. Probably don't want to see that happen if you're looking for success up there this time around. Uh, for Tron Cat Lulz in the jungle matchup, see where he tries to focus and what his ganks look like. He's having a great time farming it up. Already went for an early gank, and he's still doing great in the CS department. Uh, early recall, though, from PK Leader just got him the other jungle item. So not really seeing a whole lot of... Um, direction just yet always should be going for uh, runic echoes for both junglers mid lane matchups should be exactly the same as game one rod of ages working on by jungles uh, by uncle sam and now bottom lane here we go got the lantern pulling him in there's the stun onto the dredge line we do need the uh hook to hit it's gonna be a play as well and it's first blood the kansas city royals who knew they were this good at league of legends too right Maybe if they could be this way during the regular season, uh, never mind. But they, uh, let's see, the uh, Northwestern has been good enough to make it here all the way to the round 32 of the CSL playoffs this season. And they are on the hat. Oh man, there is the flay backwards. Where's the death sentence? No, not coming out. I was, I was hoping. I had my, uh, had my caster uh, voice ready for the uh, outplay on Pedriacal, but 
Not able to make it happen. He's pushed back behind his turret. We've already got first blood off of that gank from uh, Troncat Lulz. Great play in there and just beautiful Thresh play here by Assault Fire. I know uh, a lot of people were kind of hyped up for that. It's definitely living up to it. Helping out with the first blood. Here comes Gragas. Uh, he's looking for maybe a trip behind the turret once the lane got pushed up. But that lane is not going to get pushed for quite a while. So he's now coming around for this lane. Uh, or this uh, river gank, but that's not gonna work either. So some struggles here for young Gragas as he uh, Switches skins coming around this time not sure if it's necessarily gonna be even uh, any more effective But we'll find out as we have a recall for our duo lane Northwestern looking to pick up some extra items uh, Let's see his Excuse me, look for Tear of the Goddess and a pickaxe for an early Muramata. Could be the completed item there. Or you just go in for a Iceborne Gauntlet early, which gives you that early item effectiveness, but doesn't get your Muramata stacking quite as uh, quite as quickly. Uncle Sam taking a lot of auto attack damage. Trades it back with a Rift Walk, but I'm still not sure that's exactly as dominant as the situation as he found himself in early. Here comes in Tronk Atlas. Look at that slow from the Death Charge, the Dredge Line backwards, and uh, what, what is Tronk Atlas doing? He's literally 1v2 just being annoying. I think it would have been better to just fight that <laughs> instead of trying to interrupt anything. But uh, he's, he's, you can see he's definitely... Playing the jungle my way, or his way, I suppose, as the case may be. Still trying to keep an eye on the situation at hand, and I think the biggest thing to watch out for is going to be uh, probably jungle pressure. I've said it a lot of times, but uh, Gragas traditionally pretty weak over the course of game one. We'll see if he can uh, match up for Troncat Lulz, who we've already seen trying to 1v2. I think that's a little bit overzealous. <laughs> we'll see what he can get done. Actually went for a little bit more early game, and instead of powering through to the Runic Echoes, picked up as a Hunter's Potion as well. That's actually pretty cool, because it does give you health and mana based on how much you farm. So it does give you uh, resets on your stacks. It gives you a bonus stack whenever you kill a major minion, or a uh, monster, I think. Yeah, minions are in lane, monsters are in the jungle. All right, we got it. But a little bit of a change from game one, as Taburu's actually 10 CS up over his lane opponent. Granted, Granted Derp has not been back to base by, and Trundle has, so we should see him recall here in just a little bit. He has a ton of gold, 2k gold sitting on him right now, and Taburu put down that pressure. Malphite is past level 6, so... Excuse me, Tonka Lulz should be, oh man, the calling canceled there, actually, a little bit short if I'm not mistaken. Um, maybe not, maybe just running out of damage there is, uh, Kansas City Royals picked up that first blood, but could not translate it, uh, into continued lane dominance, as he's having some struggles. And part of the struggles of playing Ezreal is that when you come back to lane, you pick up a tier of the goddess, that's basically 720 gold that you spent on non-combat stats. So sure, it allows you to spam more spells, but it's not actually going to deal more damage. Whereas Lucian comes back to lane with a BF sword. That's just straight up, I spent gold on dealing damage. So everything is going to deal a little bit more. Troncat is now in a 1v2. Not sure exactly how that's going to transpire, because it's, it's pretty hard to chase an Udyr. He runs into his jungle. He's heading that back to base with that legendary Udyr skin. Oh, recall animation is so sick. He's heading back, but uh, yeah, what's also so sick is, whoa, not sure where that's going, but uh, keep an eye on the mid lane. Uh, Uncle Sam heading back to base after the shockwave lands, pulls him in, and I think we can afford to get a quick instant replay of exactly how that mid lane aggression went down. Command protect to pull him backwards, and right off the rift walk, shockwave to pull in, an immediate flash force out there. Great realization there by Wafflemeister, and a little bit of a questionable rift walk there onto the creep wave to uh, try to just clear the wave out. 
Ignite is down for Waffle Meister, so we won't have that, whereas Uncle Sam will. But a flash, probably still a great opportunity to have. And uh, we saw an early uh, Rift Herald in game number one from Troncat Lulz on Elise. But this is actually going to be a three man. He did it by himself. It's like, how many Southern Illinois University students does it take to do a Rift Herald? The answer is three. But there's a nice play on the back line. Desault to fire. Looking for the death sentence here. It does have it available. Hard to thread it through the minions. Uh, Lantern thrown backwards, but Troncat Lulz, he's just motoring in. Does get knocked up, but uh, ooh, there's a flay. Death set is flashed away from. Is there still the damage to follow? No. Nice shield there. Titan's Wrath securing Dredge Line. The survival, and uh, still flashes forced out. Two flashes from an Udyr running in who didn't even take the Lantern. Sounds good to me. And that could set up this dragon. So looks like it is going to be started here by Northwestern. So Dragon number one, for the second time in a row, has gone over to Northwestern. They're going to keep that in their corner, and uh, they did secure first blood uh, away again. However, if you look at the actual gold count, uh, SIUE is ahead. And where are they getting that gold count from? Well, they're getting advantages top lane, mid lane, and as far as AD carries go, every single lane is actually winning in CS. So it's a great way to get early gold. Need to make sure that they can turn that into champion kills and team fights and objectives and good stuff like that. Well, now here's an objective. They're looking to steal away that red buff. It's taken down pretty low, but oh, the flay to cancel that dredge line. You're canceling out the guy's entire name. Trying to get away from there, but it's just not going to work out. Incredible Thresh play by Desaultifier. Secure yet another kill for Northwestern. Saddest scuttle crab ever going to die. Another horrible death. I guess he doesn't actually die. He just burrows into the ground. I'm still trying to figure out like how... The Scuttle Crab gives a move speed aura around it. I was thinking like maybe it's like the vibration of its little antenna things, but they're actually standing perfectly still. I can see them. I seen it. And it's not going anywhere. So apparently that means you get move speed from it. Who knows? One of those great mysteries of Summoner's Rift. But uh, yeah, so top turret's going to go down. There's a the death sentence underneath the turret. A lot of damage from just even just that poke. That's the power of completing the Mana Moon. And the great thing about Ezreal, like, if you had told me back in, like, you know, Season 1, Season 2, we'd be building cloth armor on 80 carries, I would have been like, okay, yeah. Because back then we had Riggle's Lantern that built out of cloth armor, and that was pretty core for 80 carries. Sounds weird because it's a jungle item. Doesn't matter. It was great. And that's about the last time I expected to see armor built on 80 carries. Until one day all that changed, and we had the uh, Iceborne Gauntlet come in. It means that Ezreal is going to be pretty strong when it comes to taking Lucian damage and... When it comes to taking Thresh damage, Pedriacal is not very strong. It's the Saltifier are really kind of owning it up there in the lane. So bottom lane looking good for uh, Northwestern as so they're starting to come back into it. But Taburu up top lane, he took the first turret of the game. And he's still putting on the pressure. Doesn't have too much to worry about. But this is a different build that we are seeing. Uh, going Titanic Hydra Rush first. I still like, whenever I look at Titanic Hydra and I see that it only gives 35 AD, like, eh, I don't know. But it does give bonus AD on hit um, uh, as well. So you can't really say too many bad things about that uh, from the cleave. There's a shockwave on Uncle Sam, but here comes in Troncat Lulz. The flash for the flash. Is this going to be a dive coming in? There's the Gragas flash in as well. The turnaround. Zaha, PK leader, sets up for a double kill. Is he going to go in for this one? Well, where's the rift walk? We're going to need to see the body slam, the double dunk for Haha, PK leader. Picking up two there, and man, I was saying some bad things about Gragas' mobility. He's moving all over the lane there, getting the flash and the dash. He flashed in there for the save under turret. And then he gets one, out, not one, but two off the explosive cast. Can knock Kassadin back in. Mmm. Looks good. Haha, ha, PK leader 2 0. 
And uh, yeah, he's fixed the issues that we had from game number one. He's putting on early pressure. And I guess 15 minutes is not necessarily early, but he's putting on pressure in the lanes that need it. Game one, that lane was mid lane, and it was definitely a struggle. Game two, he's helping make it not a struggle by helping out Waffle Meister. And there you go. You can't really ask for, uh, for too much more than that. He's also going to be going for an Iceborne Gauntlet second in the jungle. I really like that choice, but it does mean that he's going to be especially susceptible to the uh, primarily magic damage lineup of Northwestern. So if you build that Sheen into an Iceborne Gauntlet, you're going to have a bad time when it comes to taking tons of magic damage uh, when you're building armor. Lane phase still continuing for the most part. Uh, like I said, turret taking down top lane, but are we going to see this Udyr pressure pay off? Yeah, running right through the tri brush. He's already got his Swifties moving on in. And Taburu uh, does force out his ultimate. We'll heal him back up, but he's pushed out in the 1v2. We didn't see any committals there. Grand Derb wasn't going for like tower dives or big ultimates, but bottom lane there. We got the Depth Charge landing. The ultimate still flies. That's true shot barrage. Still true. <laughs> Felt kind of weird to see it uh, fired off from uh, from the knockup. In fact, let's actually get a little bit of Tutor's action here. As we see the knockup about to channel. The extra high True Shot Barrage. And we're back at it again on Summoner's Rift. It looked pretty cool, so I couldn't pass up the opportunity <laughs> to check that out. Recall coming in here for Uncle Sam, who's going to complete his Rod of Ages and Ionian Boots of Lucidity. Grabbing both of those, but still a little bit behind schedule. Even though he's the one that's picked up kills off of the aggression in mid lane, the farm is definitely going to Waffle Meister. And we saw this in game number two. He was able to come back from a 20 CS deficit and turn it into a 20 CS advantage. Well, now he's just got about a 35 CS advantage there. And not one, but now two Rift Heralds have both gone over to uh, Southern Illinois. That means that they are really turning the tides here as they picked up both of those Rift Heralds, whereas in game number one, we had like the first three Rift Heralds. I, I, I go games without seeing any Rift Heralds taken, but the first three went to Northwestern in game one. Now we're seeing the tides definitely turning as we have a much more even game on our hands. Uh, Flash Force out there by the dredge line. That is a consistent, uh, or something that is consistent amongst the games uh, so far is a dredge line. A little bit rough positioning as he has now died twice, so he's forced to flash away there. Taburu trying to put the damage down. It does look like he is eventually going to win that out. Does have Subjugate. Doesn't want to pop that just yet. Dragon now being started by UI or SIUE. They are going to take it down there with Haha PK Leader picking it up. There is... Oh, no. Don't go back for the Lantern. He flashes to the Lantern. Uncle Sam feels pressure. Possibly from international politics but also in this game from uh, Thresh Lantern being put a little bit far away from his body. Rift walked the wrong way. Had to flash back onto it to get out alive. And that's going to mean another turret, the second one so far, going to Southern Illinois. So here we see the majestic Udyr in the jungle, jungling. He's on fire. For some reason, his arms have wings on them now. Who knows? But he's killing a red bramble back. Red bramble back. Apparently, it's hunting season for them. Not a good time to be a bramble back. First of all, your back's on fire. That has to suck. But second of all, uh, all right, there we go. You're uh, looking pretty extinct right now as both of them go down, taken away by the junglers. We'll see what's uh, what's up here. I uh, haven't seen really a committal from Gragas to see if he is going to go for a uh, Icewing. Uh, Icewing Gauntlet um, would be a little bit questionable. Picking up the boost of swiftness, so he's going to be motoring around. Whereas uh, it, it's a pretty magic heavy game, or magic damage heavy game. When you look at uh, uh, SIUE, 
they actually have, uh, what is that, three primary magic damage sources, two and a half if you want to count Nautilus a little bit less, uh, but I think the real focus is on Northwestern, and that's what kind of worries me. Their damage is a little bit limited if you stack up MRs, so I would expect to see the um, uh, Locket of the Iron Solari completed by Dredgeline hopefully pretty soon. He's also got Titan's Wrath for even more shields, and in general that is a... A pretty big counter to AP comps, because traditionally if you're dealing ability power, you deal it through abilities. Uh, makes sense. And so shields are pretty effective because you just need to block the initial damage. You don't need to block consistent damage. Uh, like would be from like a, a triple AD carry composition. But, oh, the dredge slide or the death sentence misses. The damage still coming in. Haha, PK leader he might just barely get out alive. He dodges the true shot barrage. Teleport coming down to the bottom lane. And there is the uh, shortest Malphite ult in the world. But Granted Dirt might have bit off a little bit more than he can chew. He's forced to flash back away there. He's slowed, exhausted, taken down by Waffle Meister. And the chase continues there with the dredge line or the. Uh, yeah, not actually going for the dredge line on Uncle Sam. Just depth charges him. The turret will fall. Arcade shifts backwards, and the Kansas City Royals gonna be feeling some struggles. Taburu with the flash in for the kill. There is a nice slow from that trophy. Is it gonna be enough to pick up the kill on the Salinator? No. Truncat lulls. He's the one next forced to flash underneath that turret. Two to four, the score, and a big push bottom. We might be looking for a game three if this push continues onto the inhibitor turret, but. Better safe than sorry. Some low health bars here from Southern Illinois. They will take the second tier turret, take the kills, and back out. Five alive and looking good. A lot of team play. A lot of just sort of come together right now over me. It's their moment right now. Drunk Outlaws, man, playing with fire. It's Udyr 0, 1, and 2. A stark contrast to game number one. Okay, that was a little bit of a silly flash there from Oriana. A little bit too far out in the lane, and uh, when you watch the Udyr kind of run at your face, you definitely got to uh, gotta respect that. He is certainly running his way around some of his drifts. Troncat Lulz, man, he knows how to play aggressively. And he's been doing a great job just, like, farming it up this game. He's uh, at, a, what, a 30 CS advantage over HaHa -Ha PK Leader. So that is, uh, that's, pr that's pretty massive. Like, you got to respect that. Udyr has been putting in work. He's going to have the items to show for it. However, at the end of the day, he is still an Udyr, and that means that you're having some struggles when it comes to, you know, long drawn out fights where you're, uh, you're trying to, you're, you're going to get kited pretty hard by things like Nautilus, by things like just the command distortion. Gragas has tons of CC, and just running around pillars can be a little bit rough, although those swiftness boots will help uh, with all the slows. As the game continues, though, so will the scaling and the effectiveness of things like Malphite ult. It's always going to be a big turnaround potential. When it comes to team fights, you land like a five-man Malphite knockup. Christmas dreams come true. Miracles happen. Come trues. I don't know what that was. But the big push down mid lane here for Southern Illinois. Almost unanswered, but here comes the team Northwestern. They're going to try to... Uh, wait. <laughs> Trunk, uh, Trunk out lulls. He's just, put, he's just punking them. Walking forward and saying, sub sun, making him step. And uh, he used to be a little bit careful. But uh, yeah, forcing out Flash is the dredge line, man. He had a dredge line up, but uh, did not want to use that as his escape mechanism. Less TB stun. Game still not over by any means. There is a pretty sizable 6,000 gold lead. Almost 6k uh, lead here for uh, Southern Illinois. They are looking good, and we are seeing a different build out of Taburu. He went for straight up magic resistance after the Titanic Hydra. Really like this build. Gives you sustain, gives you the damage, gives you now bonus damage on your Titanic Hydra based on your max health. So super cool, solid build, and of course, uh, still not, not convinced on the Iceborne Gauntlet, but it is going to keep him safe from... Maybe getting kited there on ice or by the uh, iceborne on Ezreal. Either way, uh, it's it's still a good item as far as CDR on Gragas. You can't really underestimate uh, how good being able to just use your skills more, having that come off cooldown, is gonna make Gragas a much bigger threat here. As we look back towards the mid lane for possibly another push off of that dragon takedown, we are past 30 minutes or past 20 minutes, so there's no more Rift Heralds to take. It is now Baron Nasher, and it is warded up. 
by Southern Illinois, who, to be fair, to their credit, are doing a great job at warding. The Saltifier, um... Looking to maybe limit a little bit of that ward coverage by clearing out that pink ward at Baron. Uh, but even still, great reaction. Protecting the pink wards. Valuing that, uh, you know, vision that they put up. And SIUE force the south to fire off of uh, clearing off the Baron. Ooh, uh, True Shot Barrage. Definitely putting the pain down on Pedriacle. He does have the, uh, you know, Essence Reaver, but that no longer gives lifesteal. I keep, like, questioning myself on that because I, I remember the old um, recipe for it. But, yeah, no lifesteal there in that Lucian build aside from the 3% from Doran's Blades. Nice arcade shift, but oh man, the counter, the bait, Saltifier over the wall, landed that death sentence. That was pretty sick. And a nice disjoint on the dredge line hitbox. There by uh, the Kansas City Royals. They're, pr they're pretty good at doing that. And uh, one, one, and one. I don't, I don't know if that's a good batting average, but either way. <laughs> A uh, decent power spike for Ezreal as he has completed his Muramana. Uh, really needs uh, some armor penetration, though. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that's what he's going for. Could go for a Blade of the Ruined King as his next item. Uh, but probably looking for a Last Whisper to come out uh, sometime in the near future. Man, one di a difference. We talked about it earlier on. Uh, Trundle just absolutely just murking grander. Uh, down here in the bottom lane, just cannot, uh, nothing the Malphite can do to stop that. The Brewer does respect the minion wave, though. Doesn't want to take a ton of damage from that. And so instead, oh, missed the cannon minion. Moment of silence for that, for, uh, for that, but. Still trying to see, uh, yeah, the 1v1 is not working out, and, uh, Taburu... Or Grand Up, rather, recognize he can't fight Taburu. He's going to rotate here towards the mid lane. Looking for the Malphite. Oh, where's he going to go? On to the back lane. The Flash. Both carries are going to get knocked up. This could be the turnaround here. As Northwestern University, they're pushing up the mid lane. They're going to take one. They're looking for a second one. They're going to get two. And the Death Sentence is now on to Taburu. He is so tanky, but the damage is just coming in. Kansas City Royals putting down the damage on in there and forcing the Flash out. They can chase this out there, but very low health bars might deter them low mana bar there for kansas city royals he's got the kill potential but doesn't have the mana for it and a two for zero exchange off of a flash malphite what game am i watching the answer is game two here in the round of 32 in the playoffs for csl this season is looking good it's looking even better better all the time and it's going to culminate at dreamhack thanks to our friends at asus republic of gamers Super pumped up for that one, and uh, yeah, just really excited uh, to see you know, Collegiate League of Legends looking so good. We've got crazy plays by Desaltifier. This guy's Thresh is off the Chizane, and uh, of course, on the other side, we've had uh, kind of a lackluster performance from the Dredge Line, 0-3. Um, just continually getting caught out caught out and taken down. Does have that Locket of the Iron Solari completed, so like... Uh, that, that means he's still being effective even if he's not actually in there being effective and the more magic resistance you stack the more effective it's going to be uh for southern illinois because they're going up against once again a primarily magic damage team comp so still some comeback potential i, I want you to look uh turn your uh, attention to a pretty popular item in league of legends it's called an iceborne gauntlet we have not one not two but four iceborne gauntlets in the game currently and uh, we might be looking for another one on Cassidy, except he's going to go the other Sheen route, build a Lich Bane. Got to have that synergy, man. Just go for tons of Iceborne Gauntlets. Uh, I don't think we're going to do that. But either way, um, starting to feel some struggles here for Taburu. He's not really able to put quite as much damage down on Malphite, but he is still able to shove the wave there with that Titanic Hydra. And the cone damage does hit a ton of creeps, so that's a good way to shove the wave. I was criticizing Titanic Hydra earlier. It still does what it does. It scales off of health, so it makes tanks able to deal damage, and it helps with wave clear if you're a single target champion like Trundle. So, I mean, all of those things sound great. It just uh, feels kind of rough to see how much it was nerfed as far as damage goes from, uh, from the previous iteration. Uh, and patch 
Keeping an eye on here in the mid lane. Three, two, one, and boom goes the dynamite. Looking to keep some of this uh, wave off the mid lane turret. Gonna make sure to give that over to Wafflemeister, who, to be fair, is actually doing a great job at keeping that CS ridiculous. Uh, game one is insane. Came back from a 20 CS def uh, deficit to have like a 20 or 30 CS lead. So pretty ridiculous stuff there. And he was 0 too. Now that he started out with a much better game, he's 70 CS, well, almost 70 CS uh, up above. Actually, over 70 CS. Aha, math. How does it work? Um, above his lane opponent there, Arcane Shift out is good, but Charmcat Lulz is actually going to get caught here. This is going to be a little bit rough. Pulling him in off the Command Shockwave, but can they turn this one around? A Dry Cool very, very low, and he's going to go down to Dissaultify. Uncle Sam flashing out there. He's going to get out and survive alive. Grand Derp a little bit low there, does not have anywhere to go. He is going to go down there, and oh man, trying to turn this damage back around, but Dissaultifier is slowed out there. Is going to go down, giving a double kill away to Wafflemeister. Arcane Shift back away, so kiteable. This team comp, Kansas City Royals, putting down the poke damage. Once again, very low in mana, so uh, I'm not really sure we're going to be able to see this wave get cleared. Has to watch out for a lot of threats coming his way. And just the big beefiness, this front tank wall of Nautilus, Trundle, and Gragas. Supported by a crazily farmed Orianna. And oh man, nice arcane shift there. Will keep Ezreal alive, but he's so low on mana. There's not really a whole lot he can do. Turret going down Uncle Sam. You're not going to be able to assassinate a tank line. Maybe go in there on Waffle Meister, but with no Zonya's Hourglass, he would actually just die. Trying to keep it close here. Uncle Sam marauding the retreat. The Southern Illinois as they back out of the base. Nice save on the inhibitor. It's not going to go down just yet. Never noticed the hearts around the edge of that Valentine's Day skin for Oriana. But uh, either way, the inhibitor survives. Uh, base turret taken down. First base turret of the game is out of there. But uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying come back yet. But there is still some potential here as with that disengage, it will actually allow the second dragon uh, to be picked up by Northwestern. So that does give them the ability to deal true damage burned turrets when they hit them and killing turrets. One way to get a bunch of gold to help your team come back in the game. So from one thing to another, we might be seeing uh, maybe a little bit of signs of life here from Northwestern. However, uh, a couple of things that are going to keep that from being too much of a silver lining to their cloudy mid game uh, are going to be some big item pickups for uh, Southern Illinois. You got Void Staff looking for crazy AP there on Waffle Meister's Oriana, who is going to be a ridiculous source of magic damage in these team fights. Now, 304 after that last. Uh, fight and uh, of course on the uh, utility side of things a Zerat portal picked up by haha -ha PK leader uh, Gonna keep an eye on where he wants to put that looks like it's put down here at this turret And you'll notice that it's not put aggressively in a bush like here to use the voidlings to kill turrets All you want to do with your Zerat portals is have them exist in a lane. Oh man here we go taking the lantern that death charge is going the distance PK Leader walking all the way up, but as he walked a little bit too far, lots of shields keeping him safe there off of, honestly, an overextension. Uh, recall back to base here for Uncle Sam. He's coming out with a Lich Bane completed. He's just going for the same cast and build over and over again. And, you know, hey, if it works, if it fits your playstyle, go for it. It definitely worked in game one. He's going to have to put on his carry pants as he is the hardest or the, the most fed member on his team. As far as kills are concerned, he's actually down in gold uh, by just a little bit to their 80 carry Kansas City Royals. Keep an eye on the ball in the mid lane as we watch it just get moved around. It's sneaky. But I promise you I can keep... Okay. <laughs> right as I was promising to keep an eye on it, it disappears. Great. <laughs> 10 out of 10. We have the wet noodle fight. It's the most electrifying matchup in... Okay, never mind. Even they recognize they don't want to fight that. <laughs> it just looks so silly. It's like you got a giant rock. Malphite literally is sitting at almost 300 armor right now. Trundle sitting at 171 AD. I'll let you guys do the math on that. It doesn't work out. <laughs> but mid lane, the inhibitor still alive. Um, you know, lane phase is over, but we're still having an opportunity for carries to farm here uh, for Northwestern. And they are able to wave clear and defend these turrets pretty decently. The consistent cues coming out from Ezreal. Um, K 
Kansas City Royals does have a decent amount. Oh, the grab there lands onto Petrangle. He's pulled underneath the turret. It's ridiculous damage onto the carry lineup. They're going to have to disengage here from underneath the turret. But the pull back in, Udyr is out of there. The turnaround, the damage. The Kansas City Royals now the looking to be the next one to go down. He's turning around more damage. Is he going to find the kill? He does. Oh, my gosh. Kansas City Royals with a double kill. It's a shutdown for Uncle Sam. And the comebacks are real. It's a one for four exchange. We might even be seeing... Okay, no. <laughs> we might be seeing more <laughs> action in the bottom lane. Just kidding. Holy. Northwestern. Not saying no. Or not, not saying die. I, I forget what the saying is. Either way, what they are saying is that they are still alive and now ahead in kills. Only took them 35 minutes. Now Baron Nasher, do they start it? Is the question. Who's going to make this call? Looks like this salt of fire. He's waiting for that TP. It's coming in. And with Malphite to tank this, this could be Baron Nasher for Northwestern. Was that the throw that's going to turn this game around? Four members still dead. Just now respawning for Southern Illinois. And man, this game is starting to... This game is dangerous. Much like the dangerous game that was pointed out. It was so huge. For Kansas City Royals World Series champs, man, if they played Ezreal, or if they played ball like they play Ezreal, be looking pretty good. You got the lifesteal coming in from Blade of the Ruin King, and man, just MVP performance there from that Ezreal. Even though he doesn't have the most kills, he definitely made that play, because uh, there's just so much overcommittal to try to kill him underneath turret. And now he's coming back, he's got Baron buff, he's got the, the red buff, the purple buff, he's got the blue buff on him, not the actual blue buff, the, uh, buff from his uh, Muramana, which now actually does not have an active toggle. Uh, basically, you deal the damage to champions, but you don't deal uh, the damage to minions, if I'm uh, not mistaken. It activates, uh, only activates where you, while you have greater than 20% mana. So, some, some different, some definitely different changes, but it's still working out. And now with Baron buff minions pushing into the mid lane, Poke damage on this turret, just gonna let it fall. That's actually a really good decision by Southern Illinois. You don't defend outer turrets this late in the game. Like, it's just not that important. Like, nobody cares if you have an outer turret available. Um, turrets don't really deal all that much damage at this point in the game, especially not to Baron buffed up minions. So letting that turret fall, they might even be forced to let another turret fall. There's about 40 seconds left until Dragon comes up, so that's another Objective to keep an eye on. Third Dragon would be huge uh, for either team because at this stage in the game, map mobility is absolutely crucial uh, for you know champions like Malphite. It helps them get in range for engages. Champions like Ezreal, it helps you actually just run away for uh, times when your arcane shift is just not good enough. And now, grouping up here at the turret, you'll notice it's only the tanks underneath that turret. Grab there onto the dredge line. He's taking a ton of damage down below half HP. Culling coming out from behind. Dredge line still low. The true shot barrage from KC Royals. They are picking up so many kills. What a team. And there's the Malphite ult. It's going to come in there, but I'm not sure. Oh, actually, no, he didn't use it. He just took the lantern. I was like, wait, what? He's traveling faster than the speed. Of oh, wait, that's just the lantern. Uh, I was like, why didn't it knock anybody up at the end? Not a Malphite ult. False alarm, guys. He still got that unstoppable force. That's just a Thresh lantern. It was only a prank, guys. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> we push in Ford now, possibly a base turret. We got two dead. The duo lane out of there. And then the, the uh, Northwestern Wildcats taking down their first inhibitor of the game at 38 minutes. What a game. What a game. These guys are doing pretty well. As they run by my camera down towards the dragon. Whoosh. So epic. No, just kidding. Uh, but yeah, the uh, dragon's going to go down. That will be third dragon. We had three dragons. We had four turrets. <laughs> Caster just walks up and bonks it. He's like, hey, that turret has precisely two HP. So going up, taking it down. And the blue team. That's Northwestern University. Man, these guys. Uh, tenacious. And no, that doesn't reduce crowd control. It's just them being uh, hanging on by the, uh, kind of the skin of their teeth. Never really understood that. Maybe it's talking about gums. Maybe some teeth actually. I, I don't even want to think about that. Super gross. But it's a saying that means that they are hanging in here. <laughs> which is all, all I've really tried to say. Jeez. That was harder than, it, uh, harder than it should have been. Man, guys, it's been a long day. I've been solo casting. It's a little bit rough. So 
please bear with me. If you've got comments, let me know after the game on Twitter at Rapid Casting. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say because this series has been crazy. Even if all you type is like colon capital O, that's super good analysis <laughs> for the way this game is going right now. It's uh. It's, it's pretty good. So now kill advantage, turret advantage, gold advantage from being down six and a half thousand uh, gold. Northwestern University lose their Baron buff, but they are still pushing up the top lane. Very, very strong push. And the poke from this Ezreal is going to be absolutely massive. Even looking for like a bloodthirster. But, oh, there's the pillar. Here's the engage. They're going to have the uh, big double knock up there. Bounce of the carries around. Cast it will rift walk out. There, there's a lot of poke damage. Look at the damage from the carries in the back line from Northwestern. Putting up a lot of it. The front tank line surviving for so long. We got a lot of poke damage there from Ezreal. The death sentence will land to stop Trundle from running forward. But Pordrykel will take down the uh, the Udyr and there's a big lockdown finally dredge line coming up big with a dredge line a huge pillar from Taburu we're finding one we got two we got three get the camera it's a triple kill for Lucian the Dragle coming up big and man run for the hills Northwestern got caught out overextending big pillars and now a big push in here for Trundle is looking to catch anybody recalling, but nope, you will not be quite that lucky. As now a push through the top lane, this could be top inhibitor. Uh, I'm struggling to see a way that it won't be. 30 second death timers. Um, I don't think this is the game, but it's definitely going to decimate the top. This could actually be two inhibitors that you uh, SIUE could take down here. They're definitely going to get this base turret. They're definitely going to get this inhibitor. 10 seconds left on the rest of Northwestern. Do they get greedy for the second inhibitor? No. Uh, if Cassidy's uh, careful, he could actually chase them back up uh, the, the lane to try to delay their... Whoa. I was just showing the, uh, the void spawn. Yeah, accidentally misclicked. On the map, but yeah, avoid spawn spawning in the bottom lane. Keep that lane being pushed in, and man, this is this is starting to get a little bit ridiculous. So, uh, speaking of ridiculous, uh, Gragas has now picked up a banner of command for this minion, gonna gonna make it ridiculously hard for Grander to uh, uh, push out. So yeah, Malphite will have a struggle in the bottom lane. So bottom lane is pushing. Mid lane inhibitor is available and i guess the good thing for northwestern is that the inhibitor that they lost is the closest inhibited baron so they can clear out this lane of super minions and still keep an eye on the baron pit because it is up in 20 seconds and uh siue edwardsville they are going to be in the area with their eyes set on either the mid lane inhibitor and maybe even a game win or the Baron and so it's a just really difficult decision making this is when having good shot calling good shot callers really comes into play Ezreal chose to go for a bloodthirster for double lifesteal items instead of a Lord Dominic's Lord Dominic's regard I really think that decision could wind up biting him because now he just actually deals zero damage uh, to the front line here uh, Gragas may take a little bit more damage because he hasn't gone for like the most traditionally tanky build uh, he's got uh, like two and a half damage items uh, on him so eh, I guess that's actually just two because you take the two half whatever Anyway, uh, all I'm trying to say is there's a big tank line, especially Trundle, and I don't... Uh, Warmog's is kind of a trap item because even though it gives you crazy regen, if you're taking consistent damage, it actually just doesn't do anything. Dead, or Death Sentence lands on to Gragas. Nobody cares. It's just Poke Wars. Who's going to be the big man to start the team fight? Could definitely be Malphite. Grand Derp has the potential. However, um, you know, we still got this Void Spawn or... Uh, Zerat portal down in the bottom lane continuing to push this lane out little by little somebody's gonna have to go down there and deal with it there's super minions pushing up in the top lane as this wave gets ever closer to this inhibitor is this gonna be the fight they're looking for siue trying to position for it grander pushing forward making his presence known there's still a little bit of damage here from this ezreal it's still 300 damage on ezreal or 300 ad uh, just about 289 but just little by little one auto attack after another you can see Pedriacle getting down just little tiny pokes patience such a virtue here for southern illinois yeah you got to find the knock up here the death sentence misses and that's going to be the inhibitor right there no opportunity to save that 
I guess Grander might have had an opportunity, but you just gotta coordinate. And now with a huge push down here on the bottom lane, and oh man, this yeah, just way too many minions to save. A banner command minion in there. Taburu going big up in the front there. Troncat Lowe's just gonna die. A big Malphite ult uh, gonna come in. There's a shockwave to turn that one bat right back around. But this is just not gonna work out. And the barrel snags the salt of fire and with a double kill there. No, it's a second triple. Illusion putting up a big score line. A3 and 2. Didn't show up in game number one, but man, did he ever make a performance here in game number two. Uh, KC Royal Chef, look at that damage, Pedriacle. Dominating, godlike, brutal, savage, wreck. That's his contribution. <laughs> Uncle Sam puts him down. He's saying, sit down, son. Even though he lives, loses the game, he is going to put up a pretty big performance here and will wind up going down at the same time. And at long last, 45 minutes in, we are going to see the Nexus Exploderino here at 45 minutes, 16 to 12, the final score. The Southern Illinois University Edwardsville take out Northwestern. Moment of silence there. J. Sweet's League of Legends, man. This is a... Uh, what a game, what a series, and I'm so glad that I could be, be here with all of you wonderful people to experience it at the same time. Thanks for watching, guys. You guys have been awesome, and we're not done yet. It's going to take a quick, we are going to take a quick commercial break uh, before we get into even more League of Legends as we hit up the final deciding game number three of tonight's matchups. So I hope you guys enjoy a brief break, and we are going to be back after a short uh a brief respite. Thanks for watching. Stick around. We'll be right back.